We are gathered here today to say a loving farewell to eyeshadow because if you have not heard yet, eyeshadow is out, eyeshadow is dead, eyeshadow is apparently for old people, that is what Nylon is reporting and mm, I don't fully agree with that but you know I'm always interested in the evolution of trends and I want to talk today a little bit about the new direction I'm seeing going in makeup while we actually do a very eyeshadow focused makeup look today. And I want to incorporate a lot of makeup techniques that are much less popular today that used to be like staples maybe a decade ago. So obviously we're going to go pretty full glam with eyeshadow. So I'm going to be using the new Sigma Cool Neutrals palette, which as you've probably heard by now is uh, maybe not the best name for this palette, but I do think it's really pretty. And I've been using this a lot, but I have not used every single shade yet, mostly because I actually don't use eyeshadow as much anymore, which kind of fits into this theme. So I'm gonna start off with an eyeshadow stick just to be our base. This is from Sigma, it's the shade Ignite. Now these days I normally do my base first because my eyeshadow tends to be pretty minimal, but since we'll be doing more actual eyeshadow today, I figured we'll start with the eyes first so that we can clean up and not have to worry about any fallout on the face. And I'm gonna start off with the shade Harvest throughout the crease. But the nylon article that I referenced is titled, Is Eyeshadow an Old Lady Thing? And this article was done in response to a very viral TikTok where a creator, she said that her daughter told her that eyeshadow is like an old lady thing. So my daughter just told <laughs> me that eyeshadow is a Gen X and millennial thing, <laughs> AKA an old lady thing. Is that true? Is that true? which ended up sparking a pretty big discussion. You know, is eyeshadow dead? Are people really wearing eyeshadow anymore? And even before this viral video, that was actually a couple months ago, but even before this, it was pretty apparent that there has been a pretty big shift in makeup trends. And we see this not only based on what I'm visually seeing people wearing, but also what is being released. We're getting less eyeshadow palettes than we were a few years back. The eye-related products tend to be pretty minimal. A lot of one-and-done eyeshadows launching, a lot of single shadows. But if anything, I feel like in terms of product launches, it's very complexion-focused. Lots of blushes, lots of skin tints, also a, lot, a good amount of lip focus, lots of lip oils and glossy products, but there is definitely less emphasis on eyeshadow. I'm also taking that same shade on a brush that's just a little bit more dense so I can start adding a little bit of depth to the outer corner here. This feels like so smoky and it's funny because a few years ago I would have done a, like this type of base for pretty much any eye look regardless of how like formal I was going like this is where I would have started and now I see it and it looks like so much eyeshadow because these days I'm usually just wearing like a bronzer in my crease or maybe a one and done shadow. I'm rarely dipping in too much but I do like it. There's something very glam about this. I'm trying to decide what shadow we want to use on the lid. I'm thinking we should use the shade angel swing no angel wing <laughs> yeah that's so pretty and sparkly wow this is so pretty and then just adding a little bit more depth to the outer corner with a pencil brush and the black shade it's messy but that's totally fine that's why we did the eyes first we'll clean it up with a concealer and then i'm gonna use a black mascara which also really contrasts what is super popular right now which is brown mascaras don't get me wrong there's still plenty of people that love a black mascara but the softer lash look is definitely really popular these days. I feel like in general, we're seeing less false eyelashes. I think back maybe five to 10 years ago, you would not do an eyeshadow look like this without popping some falsies on top, but I feel like falsies in general are just less popular now. Okay, wait, the eyeshadow is so pretty and glam. I feel like the thing about this style of makeup is you have to trust the process because at this point you're like, I don't know about this and it's going to get worse before it gets better. That's that's all I know, but we're gonna use a little bit of primer now for the base. So this is the Fenty Mattifying Primer. I feel like this fit into the theme of like popular makeup from a few years back. Um, I feel like primer in general is a step that I used to never skip. I couldn't even imagine doing my makeup without primer. I feel like we were, we were brainwashed to think every makeup look needed primer first, primer, foundation, then concealer. And I do think there can be benefits to primer, 
But I also think that it is not always necessary. A lot of times I feel like it's just an extension of your skin prep and depending on your skin type and your skin's needs, like primer might actually be doing more harm than good. I feel like when I think back to 2016 makeup, it was very much like you have to use a primer. Sometimes we would be seeing more than one primer. It would be like, you do a hydrating one here, a glowy one here, a pore filling one here. You Like maybe, maybe sometimes that can work. But again, depending on all your skin prep and your skin type and then the foundation you're pairing it with, you could be just making a, a soupy mess on your face. I know that description is disgusting, but sometimes too much is too much. Like not all formulas are gonna work well together to paste. De- Why am I saying my words wrong? Depending on their ingredients. And I feel like sometimes it almost makes like too thick of a layer where the the skin ends up looking cakey because there are so many steps. All that to say, I do think there can be a time and a place for primer, but I feel like we were very brainwashed to think every look needed at least one primer, but sometimes up to three. Okay, now we're gonna use actually a new foundation. This is the new hydrating version of the Fenty foundation. I've been waiting to use this thinking, let me use it on camera, so I figured today's the day. This is the shade 150. They they did send this to me. They sent me three shades total. And I'm thinking this is going to be my shade, but it's so hard to say because in the original, it oxidizes um, quite a bit. So like the color you would lay down is not what it dries down to. So this looks like it'll match now, but we'll see if it's still matching in five minutes. But I've actually heard really good things about this. I, I love the eavesdrop. That is one of my holy grails. Like I would say... That's my top two foundation formulas. It's the Tarte Cloud Camo Coverage. No. You would think I would know the name because I've already used up a full tube of it and I'm like pretty deep into my my new one, but that one and then the Fenty Eavesdrop. Those are my holy grails, but this actually looks really pretty. The idea for this video actually came to me less with the conversation about like eyeshadow being dead. And I put that in air quotes because I think if you love eyeshadow, you should keep wearing eyeshadow. You should do your makeup however you enjoy. Like that's what makeup is. It is art. It is fun. It is for me, my favorite part of the day. Like doing my makeup and picking out my outfit. Those are my times to like express myself and have some fun. So I say if you love eyeshadow, wear eyeshadow. But my my thoughts for this video really came in in what video was it recently where I mentioned setting spray and I was like, you know, I never wear setting spray anymore. And a few years back, I wouldn't even dream of doing my makeup without applying a setting spray. And then those those thoughts got me contemplating other makeup steps like that. I'm like, you know, I used to feel that way about primer, even like eyeshadow primer, I would say because I wear so much less eyeshadow these days, I view primer a little bit differently. I mean, not always, because I do feel like the older I've gotten, the more I need some sort of base on my eyelids or they will just crease like crazy. But I feel like because my eyeshadow looks are so much less intricate these days, the the products that I'm using as like a prep step on my eyes just look different. I'm, I'm literally not paying attention. So if you're like, Kelly, that's not blended out well, you're probably right. I need to look in the mirror, but this is looking nice. The coverage is a nice like medium, but not not super high medium, but I think you could build this up, but this is with, this is without. Lucky for us, I'm breaking out right now. Actually not lucky for me, lucky for you because it will help us determine like the coverage level here. I'm breaking out in like weird spots I normally don't break out like right in here. So I think it is related to either a makeup or skincare product. Actually, I have a, I have a suspicion on what I think it is. I, last night for the first time, I tried the Milk Makeup Cleansing Balm. And if you own this, please help me. I Does yours smell bad? When you immediately opened it, did it smell like it had gone bad? Or did mine actually go bad? I can't tell if it's just like, okay, this is how the product smells because it doesn't have artificial fragrances in it. Or did something happen to it? Because I used it for the first time last night and then I woke up with all these pimples. I have a strong suspicion that's what it is. If you own that, please tell me. Is it smelly? Okay, wait, this looks really pretty. It's not my perfect shade. It's like a hair too dark, but 
Uh, it's okay. It's about to be summer. So this probably will match me in the summer. We'll just go down my neck a little bit But I do feel like it covered those the the redness from those breakouts pretty well My nose has also been Extra dry lately from the spring weather and blowing my nose a hundred times a day And I feel like it's even sitting well there because lately everything is clinging there. I want to do our other cream products before we go in with concealer. So we're gonna start with cream contour. Contour is another step I never do anymore. I won't say never. I, I so infrequently do. And that's another step that a few years ago, I, again, I wouldn't dream of doing my makeup without fully contouring my face. But now I can't remember the last time I've really contoured. But again, I'm kind of having fun with this look today. So this is Milk Toasted. I feel like these um, stick products for milk were really big a few years back. But as we know, they have the uh, shrinkflation has made its way to those. And now they're so teeny tiny. Wait, ironically, when I was just saying they were really big, back then I meant it as popular but I guess it was a double entendre because they used to be triple the size it is interesting to think though when I imagine makeup trends from five to ten years back and just the popularity of contouring in general it's funny because we were kind of taught contouring as a one-size-fits-all method and that just is not how it works we all have very different face shapes and we also all have very different goals for like the look we're trying to achieve if anything I feel like all these techniques we're trying to get our faces to kind of look the same now I'm gonna do my chin the chin contour was always hard for me because I feel like it you can you can see it sometimes it's hard to get this to not be like so visible I feel like the key is kind of more under here versus like along the jawline Okay, we'll try to blend that out a little bit. This is looking pretty though, I will say that. Um, I think we'll do concealer now. This is my favorite. It is the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer and we're gonna do a triangle of it, okay? This, honestly, with, I'm gonna do a, Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do less than a full triangle, okay? I'm so sorry. That's that's gonna be it. I can't do any more than this. This concealer is so high pigment, you do not need this much. But this was how we did it. This was how it was done. So I feel like it's necessary for this look. Actually though, this is not bright enough. So I'm gonna add another concealer that's even lighter just to brighten it a little bit. This is Fenty 140N. And then this is gonna help kind of clean up that edge that we made, make it a little bit sharper around the eye. And then I'm gonna take whatever's left on my brush and tap under the contour to sharpen brush sponge to sharpen that up a tiny bit okay i will say though as makeup trends have gotten so minimal these days and we're seeing very like soft looks clean girl i i love it all i just love makeup i like full glam i like minimal makeup like they're all they all have a lot of beauty to them but i will say sometimes more is more sometimes with like the very minimal makeup look and like sheer skin tint, just a little bit of dewy blush, almost zero concealer. That rarely like wears super well throughout the day just cause there's not enough product there. Like sometimes I do feel like you need to layer things up a little bit. Like sometimes adding a little bit more almost looks like less when you're putting it in the right places. And that is like a style um, mantra that my roommate and I use. We always say, we'll be like, okay, more is more because sometimes you're getting ready and by the way, rare beauty bliss. Like you'll have on an outfit and you'll be like, okay, I kind of want to wear these earrings with it. And you're like, no, these earrings are kind of too much. They're too bold for the rest of the outfit. And if you just stop at the earrings, it is too much. But then if you add more, then the earring suddenly makes sense and it just feels more intentional. Does this, does this make sense? Sometimes I feel like more is more. Like you need a little bit more to almost make it seem like less or not less, but to make it seem like it's working. So sometimes I do agree less is more, but I also think sometimes more is more. An actually perfect example is what I'm about to do with my powder. So I'm gonna do a little bit of baking. If we just go in with powder right now, because my face has all of these creams on it, the powder, like a heavier, um, loose powder, is almost going to make a mushy paste. You know what I mean? If you try to set a very dewy base with a heavy powder, there is a high likelihood it is going to cling or separate or even pill or just act 
act weird. So we're going in with a lighter weight powder first. This is Kosas Cloud Set. And just kind of like deglazing. That's That sounds like a weird way to describe it, but we're just making it so I'm not gonna be dewy, so it's not gonna stick, so that the loose powder sits better. Okay, so for our loose powder, we're going to bake. This is the e.l.f. Halo Glow. These days, I do this with a triangle puff. I feel like triangle puffs have gotten so popular these days, but in like the, the peak of baking, we would use a brush, so I'm gonna use a brush. This is the same brush I used for the other powder. This is the Sigma Soft Blend Concealer. I'm just gonna lay down a heavy layer. I don't like like, I don't like too, too much baking. You could definitely do more or you could do less. It's so funny though, when I think of like 2016 makeup trends, this was like a must. Just like contouring, I was like, you gotta do a primer, you've gotta contour, you've gotta bake. We'll do a little baking under here too. Okay, now I'm just, dusting this away. Now a little bit of bronzer. This is my Fenty bronzer. And I know the blush is looking very light and minimal, but I almost want to leave it there. I feel like if anything, blush has, blush has gotten so popular in the last few years, but prior to that, it was a lot less common to wear such bold blush. I feel like blush has taken the place of highlighter. Like, you remember 2016 people would say, I want my highlighter to be seen from space. I got a comment the other day where someone described their blush like that. They're like, I want you to see my blush from outer space. That is the like step that people want to see visibly these days. But I will say it is a harder balance to do with a more glam eye with more of a structured contour and then like a heavier blush. That's when it can start to look like a lot. So actually what I think I'm gonna do is use a nude blush. This is exposed from Tarte, just so we get a little bit of color there, but it's not the statement of the look. Whereas in 2024, the blush is the look. But today, the eyes are the look. So we don't want the blush to take away. The blush is just like completing the face, but it's not the focal point. Editing Kelly here to say that I obviously meant to add a highlighter to this look because how could we finish this look without highlight? And I completely forgot because I use highlighter so infrequently. It was sitting right next to me and I still did not put it on. Okay, the step we're all dreading. I know you're probably dreading me doing this as much as I am dreading doing this, but we're gonna do an Instagram brow. Not really, not really, but we'll, we're gonna use Dip Brow from Anastasia. I think mine is a little crusty right now, but I just saw a video where someone took their Dip Brow and put it in like boiling water and then it looked brand new, which does make sense because it would kind of melt down. I'm so curious if that would affect the product. Like part of me wants to try it and part of me is like, I don't know if that's a good idea. Wait, <laughs> every once in a while I redo an Instagram brow and I'm like, is this actually working? Does this actually look really nice? I'll tell you what, there is something about going back to dated, and I'm putting that in air quotes for obvious reasons, but dated makeup looks. And sometimes you try it again and you're like, wait, that's actually really pretty. And don't get me wrong, I love a minimal makeup, skin tint, blushy look. Like, like I said, I love it all, but the glam makeup really is just a beautiful look. Like when I, I look here, I'm like, this is pretty. Like I, I feel pretty. But if anything, I feel like the look I've done today is almost a hybrid of like current day makeup and 2016 makeup, you know? Cause I'm not going as bold and square with the eyebrows. I also didn't go as full coverage on the face. Like it is, it is definitely more coverage than I would do currently, but probably not as much as I was doing a decade ago. Okay, it's a little bolder than I go. I don't always like a bold eyebrow on my face just because editing Kelly again, watching this back, I'm like, girl, for real, what are you talking about? They don't look bold at all. My natural eyebrows are minimal and light. And I always feel like everyone's best brow is something that is very close to their natural brow. So if you have super bold brows normally, that's probably what fits your face really well versus my eyebrows are barely there. So sometimes I feel like when I fill them in a lot, it just looks unbalanced. But again, this is like a nice midpoint. Before lips, we're gonna do setting spray because as I said, setting spray was like the main inspiration for this video. But this is the Urban Decay All Nighter, which was that girl. This was this was everyone's favorite setting spray. Well, this I feel like in Fix Plus too, but this one for just like lasting forever, but this is the matte version. I also have the normal version. They have like 50 versions, but I'm gonna use this. This is, okay, I guess I can't talk while I do this. It's also funny too, when I think of like a 2016 makeup video, the amount of setting spray that I just applied probably was like a third of what we were doing then. Like you would watch the videos and they were like, 
and then they would come back on camera literally dripping. Um, even what I did just now is maybe more than you need to do, but I, it's like muscle memory. I'm like, okay, Kelly, stop. Because my finger just wants to keep going. Okay, but here, once I get to this point, you're like, okay, it's a little dewy. So I like to take my sponge and push it in. And you know what? This really is the like final step that melts it all together. And I would imagine that is, that has led to the inevitable decline of setting sprays in general because people just don't, okay, let me stop right there. I'm like really generalizing here. I know people still like wear all kinds of different makeup, but I would say it is less popular to do this many layers and this many powders specifically. And I feel like that's where setting spray really shines, like melting all the powders into place and making everything look like one. I am gonna add, I don't know. I'm like, is this just my 2024 20, brain being like, it's not enough blush or is it not enough blush? I. <laughs> I'm like, wait, am I just used to seeing my cheeks much brighter? I just feel like we need a, a little bit more, okay? Go with it. We're doing a little bit more blush before we go in with the lips. Okay, lips. I I feel like it was all about the liquid lipsticks and sometimes the bullet lipsticks too. So I'm going to take a lip liner. This is Nutmeg from NYX and top it with a pinky nude. This is Secret from Milani. It is a perfect dupe for Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. Okay, I don't know about the matte lip. I'm so into the juicier, glossy lip right now. I see this more matte lip, and I do think it pairs well with this, but I'm almost like, hmm, we need a gloss. Okay, I grabbed Chestnut from Tower 28. This is a brown, but it has a little bit of sparkle in it. I love this look. It's definitely glam. It's definitely more than I would normally do, and like, I see my reflection in the mirror, and I'm like, it feels like a lot, but probably just in contrast to the way I've been wearing my makeup more recently. But I do think inevitably this bolder, more glamorous makeup look is due for a return because trends just swing like a pendulum. So eventually we'll see this again. But I hope you enjoyed this fun little throwback. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.